Hey everybody, I'm Natalie and I own Lacey's Beauty Supply in Shelbyville, Kentucky. And today I want to talk to you guys about how I price the products for my beauty supply store. Welcome to my channel and I am an entrepreneur. I own several different businesses and I want to be able to help other people start their business and grow their business and be successful. So if you're interested in that, then give me a follow, like, comment, and turn on your notification bell. Okay guys. You will have to take your location into consideration. So different locations have a higher price of living and a lower price of living. I'm in Kentucky, so my prices might be lower or higher than yours, depending on where you're at. When you're pricing your products, also take into account your competition. I'm the only store in Shelbyville, so I can add a little bit more on to the prices because if they want to shop, they will have to drive farther. Another thing that I do, when I was finding the prices for my products, I went around, everybody knows if you watch my other videos, I went around to other beauty supply stores and I looked at the prices of their products and I took pictures and I used those prices as a starting point to help me with pricing my products. Another thing that I do is when I don't know how much to price something, I get a new product in, I'll go look online at Amazon, I'll look at Walmart and I'll look at their prices, but I don't compete with them. So don't try to compete with Walmart, Amazon. Just give let that give you an idea of how much people are paying for those for those items. Here's a little tip also, when you're pricing stuff, it's just like a psychological thing, but I always put like 99 at the end or 89 it just does something in people's brains what do you think sounds better 199 or two dollars so it's just one penny cheaper but for some reason 199 just sounds just cheaper than two dollars so that's another trick that i do i add a little 99 cent onto a little bit of everything okay let me get into individual products and how i price those starting with wigs when you're pricing a wig you want to take into account if it's a lace wig or not if it's human or not if it's synthetic is it mixed blended and the type of lace it has, is it a Swiss lace, is it a Swiss lace wig or is it HD lace? Those things determine if it should be priced lower or higher. And then on top of that, what I do is I at least double the price of my wigs, if not more. The price of a wig can be determined by the color. If it has a special color or exotic type of color, then you can charge a little bit more because you actually probably are paying a little bit more for specific colors. But basic colors like one and one B, are gonna be a little bit cheaper than say something with a dark root, an ombre color, or like a money piece color or something special on it. So now crochet here, when you're pricing, you wanna take in consideration the color, the length, and the size of the package. Some crochet here comes in a single packet, or you can get 2X or 3X, which comes with a little bit more crochet here in the package. When you price crochet here, I usually double it too, and then I add 99 cent on the end, so I usually round up. But most crochet here in, at other beauty supply stores are $7.99 a pack. So I use that price to determine the price of mine. So that's why my crochet here, single packs is $7.99. Okay, let's talk about ponytails, weaves, and extensions. When you're pricing ponytails and weaves, the price is going to be determined by if it's human, if it's synthetic, if it's blended hair. Also bundles, which is human hair. That price is going to be determined by the quality of the hair. Raw and virgin hair is going to be more expensive than just regular human hair. So bundles is going to be determined by the quality and the length of the hair and the color of the hair. When you're determining the price of ponytails, you want to take into consideration the length of the hair and if it's a special color, if it's 1B slash 27, it's going to be a little bit more than a 1. Okay, with braiding hair, you want to take into account the brand and if it's pre-stressed or not. And sometimes even the color can cost a little bit more, but I don't double the price of my braiding hair. I just go off of other beauty supply stores and the brand in here, but my braiding hair, I do not double the price. I usually about add just a couple dollars on to the price. Now with hair products like gels, shampoo, conditioners, things like that, you're not going to make a lot of profit but they're good to have in your store because it brings people in. Of course, people are going to need hair supplies. You just don't make a lot on hair products. So expect to make a 20 to 30% profit on hair products. That shampoo, conditioners, deep conditioners, relaxers. Just expect to make only about a 20 to 30% profit on those. All right, guys, that's about it for now. If you have any more questions, just comment below and I'll make a video or I'll answer your question. And thanks for watching.